She was born, she died, and then was born again? How does that work? I'm your host Raphael, and thanks for watching. This is the series where I tell you a story, its subsequent theories and explanations, and then I let you make up your mind. If you like the weird, the wonderful, the creepy and the mysterious, you might want to subscribe and click the little bell to receive notifications. Also, if you enjoy this fit, you can like and share. Now let's find out about the case Mahatma Gandhi reportedly investigated. The reincarnation of Shanti Devi. Shanti Devi was born on December 11, 1926 in a little known town of Delhi. She was just a normal girl like any other until she reached the age of four. At that time she claimed that her name was Lujti and that her home was not her real home and her parents not her real parents. High time for the loony bin! She even claimed she was married and had a son with her husband who lived in Mathura, some 155 kilometers or 90 miles from Delhi, but that she died 10 days after childbirth. She said her husband was a cloth merchant with a shop in front of Dwarkish temple. During meals she mentioned her husband wore reading glasses, had a wart on his left cheek and was a fair-skinned man. Well at least her story is detailed. At the age of six her disturbed parents sought help from a family physician. Shanti Devi narrated the things that happened after childbirth till her death and that included some complicated surgical procedures she underwent. This left the physician absolutely stunned and unable to figure out how a little girl like her would even know about such procedures. Now let me see. Oh, uh, books come to mind? When she was nine years old, Shanti Devi whispered into a teacher named Babu Pashashant from Ramjas High School Daria Janj ears. Her husband's name was Pandit Kedar Nat Shaubi. He promptly wrote a letter to Pandit Kedar Nat Shaubi, detailing everything and requested him to visit Delhi. To his surprise, Kedar Nat replied that whatever Shanti Devi had said was true and that his wife, Lujji, indeed died 10 days after childbirth. Kedarnat also said in the reply that one of his relatives, Pandit Kanjimal, lived in Delhi and should be allowed to meet Shanti Devi. He was surprised to find the amount of details she gave about Kedarnat. Okay, now this is getting creepy. During their first encounter, Kedarnat posed as his elder brother but Shanti Devi recognized him immediately, as she did his son Navneet Lal, and even pointed out to her mother the fair color of Kedar's nuts skin and the wart on his left cheek. Shanti Devi instructed her mother to make pumpkin squash and paratas stuffed with potatoes, which left Kedar Nath completely speechless, as they were his favorite food. Shanti Devi spoke of a well in Kedarnath's home courtyard, where she, Lujdi, used to take bath and even asked Kedarnath why he remarried, because he promised her, Lujdi, during death, that he would not remarry. After spending some time alone with Shanti Devi, he completely accepted that she was indeed the reincarnation of Lujdi. Take that, skeptics! The news spread like wildfire and reached Mahatma Gandhi, who appointed 15 prominent people, including parliamentarians, media members and national leaders, to investigate the case. They took Shanti Devi to Mathura. On the station, she recognized her husband's elder brother. She spoke of changes that took place in Mathura after her death that all turned out to be true and immediately recognized her father-in-law in the midst of a crowd. 
she even recognized several of her items, her bedroom, and answered several questions, which involved words only known to a clan called the Shaubis of Mathura. Shanti Devi also took the investigators to the well she spoke of in Delhi. She was surprised to find nothing was there, but then Kedar Nath revealed the well by removing a piece of large stone. Let me guess, what the skeptics are going to say? It's all a coincidence. Skeptics say that she answered many questions wrong, which was the base of proving her existence during her previous birth. And those which were correct were pure logic. <laughs> yeah, right. One of these false stories was that she supposedly hid money under a flower pot. They did find the pot, but not the money. However, one of my sources claims Kedar Nath later confessed that he had taken out the money. They also say it wasn't very difficult for them to know Kedar Nath Shaubi through the teacher of Shanti. As Dwarkadish temple is a very famous place, it wouldn't be difficult to visit and the story is of the 1930s, so it could have been tampered with. All I see is skeptics trying to wriggle themselves out of a convincing story, eh? It could also be said that reincarnation isn't a falsifiable hypothesis because it is untestable and it is therefore essentially meaningless. While others say memories of past lives, like in this case, might be verifiable and are therefore more testable than a lot of other mysticism. And I thought we had to start with trying to prove if the consciousness can survive the physical body. But then who am I, right? When stories like this pop up, it is actually a matter of do we believe them or are they all bogus? Or does the truth lie somewhere in between? You decide! There's a lot more to say about this topic than I did in this small vid, so if I forgot something or you have something to add, don't hesitate to do so. If you wish to do your own research, the links in the description might be a good start. Your thoughts and opinions are much appreciated, so drop a line in the box below. Just be respectful in the comments as there are real people with real feelings on the other side. And I hope to see you next time. Bye!